every day something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. CARICOM Mission to Haiti dubbed a success. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Thursday, 2nd March 2023. Details when we return. Hubbard's multi-department Mount Gay and Hubbard's Tire Bay, located at the Building Supplies Compound in Grand Anse, are reminding the motoring public that another round for licensing and inspection has begun. Just arrived are new shipments of quality furrowed and torque tires to fit all makes and models of vehicles at competitive pricing. Shop early to avoid the hassle of long lines. WhatsApp them on 473-405-5482. Hubbard's quality service, affordable prices. Welcome back. The one-day mission trip to Haiti by an international delegation, including the Bahamas, deemed a success. More in the ZNS News item. Solid foundation laid for the conversation to continue on how best to resolve Haiti's challenges and perhaps within what time frame. Still, the general consensus is that Haiti's situation is not an overnight fix. At the very least, dialogue has begun. As CARICOM Chair, Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis sees it, that's the very step to resolving Haiti's long-standing issues that really stand in the way of that island holding free, fair, and transparent elections on the road to stability. The Prime Minister's comments coming during a press conference following a local delegation's one-day mission to Haiti to meet with over 70 stakeholders to find solutions to its challenges, particularly Security. So if we don't, if persons don't talk, um, they remain in the positions that they're in, and not moving, become intractable, and the longer they stay not talking to each other, the worse things get. And I think this team has been able to um, get persons together to at least start that conversation. So I'm very happy and to thank each of the members that went down. Um, to Haiti to start this journey. While not going deeper into what was discussed, the Prime Minister says the question of putting more boots on the ground in Haiti doesn't arise, but rather collaboration. Well, collaboration could mean assisting with training, resourcing for the Haitian National Police, training the police officers, assisting in them getting back up the institutions like the courts and the other supporting um, institutions for the administration of justice, um, ensuring that the other organs of government are propped up and properly um, resourced. The delegation led by Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness included National Security Minister the Honorable Wayne Monroe and Immigration Minister the Honorable Keith Bell, as well as High Commissioner for the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, His Excellency Dennis Moses, and CARICOM Rep Dr. Trayan Crema. We look forward to continuing the dialogue and the uh, seeking out and ultimately achieving the consensus that is indispensable to any further movement, hopefully in the short term and not too much in the distant, in the future, uh, the security arrangements could be put in place so as to allow not only the livelihood of citizens of that country, but also the general atmosphere that is so required to advance the national development. There are many steps that we need to take going forward, and I'm sure that the separate briefings that we'll have with stakeholders further will guide those, but this is an important step for the region. Monday's mission to Haiti was a follow-up to a commitment CARICOM heads made during their 44th regular meeting in New Providence nearly two weeks ago. A similar mission is scheduled for next week in Jamaica. Still on the Bahamas, Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Philip Davis comments on the debt management of Rothschild and Company. ZNS News has more. The government still employing the services of global financial group Rothschild and Co. to assist in managing the country's debt. Prime Minister and Minister of Finance 
The Honorable Philip Davis in the House of Assembly noted that the country was receiving value for money, pointing out the lowering of the Bahamas' debt to GDP ratio from 101% under the Minnes administration to where it now sits at a 7%. On Montage Key Monday, he also sought to clarify that the government is not restructuring its debt. Restructuring has a particular, is a term of art, uh, sends a signal. We are not restructuring our debt. Okay. What we are doing is ensuring that the market, right, the capital markets, the bond market, understand our realities here, that so that it will not impact the trading of our bonds as it has been over the years. And we are also seeking advice as how to best to how best to manage our debt with a view of ensuring that we that we are able to still have space, physical space to do those things that we that are necessary to keep uh, uh, to keep the services that we offer to the Bahamian people going. The government signed a contract with the financial heavyweight in July to assist the country in finding the most effective ways of meeting its debt obligations. Uh, the update is that they're continuing. They're with, with us. They've been with us for just over nine months now. We expect the, the contract for them is one year. And at the end of the year, we'll sit and just determine that we still need the assistance. So far, they've been, <coughs> they've been quite a help in putting us where we are today. In other news, the Concerned Citizens Movement elected representative for Nevis 1, Spencer Brand, said the election petitions filed by the Nevis Reformation Party were unsubstantiated and should not have been brought before the court in the first place. Andre Huey of SKN Newsline reports. Today I am indeed filled with uh, mixed emotions, really, because from the outset I felt that uh, these petitions needed not to find themselves in the halls of the court because from reading them from the beginning, we knew that they were just um, unsubstantiated. Today I want to take this opportunity to thank the capable and competent legal team at Daniel Brantley and Associates for ensuring that today we receive the outcome that we had hoped for, and that is to have both petitions struck out, the one for uh, Premier Brantley and the one for myself, I want to thank them for their hard work and their commitment. And as Mr. Barnes would have indicated, we continue working for and on behalf of the people of Nevis. Meanwhile, lead counsel on the CCM's legal team from Daniel Brantley Attorneys at Law, Mr. Brian Barnes, spoke to matters of cost awarded to the respondents as part of the judge's ruling. Having reviewed the petition, we came to the conclusion that these petitions the one against um, Spencer Brand brought by Miss Keynes and the one against Mark Brantley brought by Miss Bartlett were nullities. We brought that to their attention by way of applications and they persisted. Um, the court gave its decision today, striking out both petitions and ordering costs against both petitioners um, with costs to be agreed if not taxed. Um, we have already canvassed before the court that in a previous election case, um, before Justice Williams, as she then was, cost was established and a basis was established. However, on this order, we will be pursuing mm, an assessment of our costs, if not agreed. So effectively, uh, Minister Brantley, Minister Brand will effectively be able to go back to their respective jobs and to do the business of the country. The petitions having been struck out as a nullity. On Monday, Justice Thompson Jr. ruled that the case submission of NRP's Ms. G.D. Kane's election petition was filed outside the 21-day period provided for by Section 98 of the National Assembly Elections Act and was therefore a nullity and is struck out and dismissed. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Ambassador for the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, Sergeant Ansel Ford, says the service has employed new techniques to combat crime. He also describes the Carnival Security Initiative as a success. He says the criminal elements were closely monitored by the officers. 
More from TV6's Nicole M. Romani. Sergeant Ford tells the TV6 Morning Edition the officers had specific targets. He notes the monthly operations that were conducted prior to the actual carnival celebration were a strategic part of the plan. What we witness over the carnival, um, that being a very safe carnival. In particular, we had no um, carnival-related murders, right? So um, the effort that was put in from the months before by way of exercises, all right, by way of uh, stop and searches, the way in which we targeted priority offenders, we targeted gang activity. He says while the police service is continuing to fight crime, they will not be able to work the way they did during the carnival all year round. When questioned further, Sergeant Ford explained that due to the long hours, the officers will suffer burnout. However, he did assure that Police Commissioner Erla Christopher is working assiduously to keep criminals in check. The Commissioner um, did, did indeed indicate that, you know, with some short-term um, goals being identified, right, that we can make, uh, let us say, an, a, a dent with respect to serious crimes with respect to homicide. And um, it's not a promise, but it's a commitment by way of how we police, how do we engage in the various, uh, let us say, strategies that we are going to employ. Further, he adds that the top cop intends to deal frontally with bad seeds within the service. One of the um, strategies would be to enhance the way in which you treat with ill discipline and rogue officers, right? So by way of members of the public seeing that, that sort of decisive action by the Commission of Police in dealing with issues of indiscipline, it will bring about a certain level of um, confidence as well as uh, deterrent to officers who may be inclined to, um, let us say, misbehave. Nicole M. Romney, TV6 News. A Caribbean academic has prescribed a major overhaul of the local education system in order for St. Lucia to carve out a new and modern economy. Vice-Chancellor of the University of the West Indies, Sir Hilary Beckles, says, while the green gold era profited the island economically, socially St. Lucians were left behind. He has advised remodeling the ideal national with education at the core. This DBS News World item has more. On the heels of St. Lucia's 44th independence anniversary, the country is said to be at a crossroads, and the direction taken will either catapult the island to future success or doom generations to subpar socioeconomic conditions. Sir Hilary Beckles, the Vice Chancellor of the University of the West Indies, made the observation as he delivered the Independence Anniversary Lecture. Tracing the development of St. Lucia through the Green Gold Era, Sir Hilary told the audience that while the banana industry brought great prosperity to farmers and the local economy, it came at a cost. He noted that many farmers used their children as labor rather than sending them to school consequently creating an illiterate society through the years. Contrasting the Barbados experience post-sugarcane, Sir Hilary indicated that a deliberate decision was taken to redirect that island's development. The Barbados did not replace sugar with another agricultural product. They didn't move from sugar to other agricultural options. They moved out of agriculture completely and promoted the services economy, tourism, finance, banking. And they already had a human resource stock of literate people who could give it the early development. Sir Hilary credited the compulsory public funded education policy that allowed for a modern economy to take shape in Barbados. He also credits St. Lucia's Sir Arthur Lewis for guiding Barbados through the path that made it an economic leader in the region today. Sir Henry believes that the time has come for St. Lucia to make a determination on its own future. The green goal has come and gone. And what we have is this beautiful, magnificent island that is a phenomenal asset 
I am always struck by the beauty of the ecosystem. Beauty of this island is your gold. That is your new gold. That's your new gold. How can this beauty be monetized to become the future bonanza of St. Lucia? The environment, the ecosystem is green gold. St. Lucia must have an education revolution, Sir Hilary says, in order to create a thriving economy, a revolution that would afford nationals with access to higher education and training. For the DBS News World, Lisa Joseph reporting. Hubbard is once again innovating the way you shop with its new online store, providing 24-hour shopping convenience. You can shop now for appliances, hardware, houseware, building material, and more. Free delivery island-wide. Start shopping now at hubbardshardware.gd. Safe, convenient, reliable. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.